Advanced Accounting for Acquisition Accounting. This is Ken Boyd, the owner of St. Louis Test Preparation. Here's our Facebook page, our email, and our phone number. And this information is taken from the Advanced Accounting text for McGraw-Hill. We talked last time generally about business acquisitions, and now we're going to talk about the accounting related to it. The latest FASB as of right now, 141R, says, and this applies specifically to companies with a fiscal year where the acquisition companies got a fiscal year of 12, 15, 08 or later. That's what we mean by which acquisition. When we do the acquisition and we need to value the assets acquired, which is the second bullet point, the value we use as you'll see in the second bullet point, is the fair value on the acquisition date. Now, what do we mean by fair value? Well, if you go back to your business law concept, fair value can be thought of as consideration given or what is given up. We talk about consideration, which is a law concept, and we probably learned it in business law. We talked about an exchange and consideration given. So whatever we gave up is that fair value. And that fair value on the acquisition date is how we value the assets when we acquire a company. A few other notes on acquisition method. We have assets that are held for sale. And if we have long-lived assets like fixed assets that are held for sale, and we're going to acquire a company with these assets, the value we place on them is the fair market value of those assets less the cost to sell them. And the cost to sell them might be, if you look below the bullet point, a commission that we have to pay to a salesperson, shipping costs, repair costs, anything we need to do to get the good ready for sale. We would subtract that from the fair market value and the amount left over is the value of the asset. Other considerations, the cost for closing the acquisition legal costs, accounting costs, we expense those as incurred. We don't capitalize them. They're not part of the fair value of the assets. The cost of issuing a security, let's assume that we're going to issue common stock and use the proceeds to make the acquisition, to pay for the acquisition. The cost of issuing those securities to pay an underwriter to put the deal together, legal and accounting costs, to pay commissions to investment brokers to sell the security is considered a reduction in our paid in capital. And finally we get to goodwill, which is defined as the amount by which the purchase price of the company we're going to acquire exceeds the net tangible assets of the acquired company. And that should be book value of the net tangible assets of the acquired company. And that is the value goodwill that is going to go on the balance sheet of the acquiring company. We're going to see that in an example shortly. We talked about in the prior video funding a new entity. We could transfer in assets. And if we transfer them in, that's going to be a book value. And that we would have an account called Investment in Hollywood Jeans, which is going to be on the books of the acquiring company, Levi, that we're going to see in a minute. And again, we see that bullet point again, net assets transferred in is going to be the investment that's going to be on the balance sheet of the company that's doing the acquisition, in this case, Levi's. So what I've done now is flip over to Excel, and I have an example where you'll see in italics, Levi's Jeans acquires a company called Hollywood Jeans, and specifically we're acquiring the assets and the liabilities of Hollywood Jeans. And here's our balance sheet. We've got book value of the assets of 400000 Then we look at the fair value of all of them, and you'll see that there is a patent that has a fair value of $80,000, and there's no book value listed for that patent. So that's one difference between book value and fair value. We have some liabilities, and then we have some equity. So you'll see that our total assets equals our liabilities plus equity. And you'll also see that we come up with a figure called the fair value of the net assets, which is total assets 
plus total liabilities to come up with the fair value of the net assets. That word net is important. Assets minus liabilities. To pay for the transaction, let's assume that Levi is going to issue 10,000 shares of $10 par common stock. So if we take 10,000 times 10, we get 100,000 <clears> that's going to go on the common stock line in the balance sheet. Right now, we have common stock on the balance sheet of $100,000 at $5 par value. We're going to issue 10,000 shares of $10 par value, so it's going to be a different issue. But please note the difference between the common stock value that's going to go on this line, that's 100,000, 10,000 times 10. There's a difference between that number and the market price the market price of the stock that we issue is 610000 So obviously that difference, just like the books appear up here, is going to go toward additional paid in capital. But we also have some other expenses as we talked about on PowerPoint. We have legal and appraisal fees that are going to be deducted from the market price of the stock. We're going to have stock issuance costs, paying an underwriter, paying investment brokers a commission those costs are going to be deducted from the market price of the stock. So where we're going on this is, is that the value that we're paying for the stock is going to be this market price less these costs. And we're going to see that, how that's handled on our next video. To wrap up for now, let's do an analysis of the valuations related to this acquisition, Levi's acquisition. What do we give up? Well, we're giving up in the value of the, of the stock that we're issuing, the 610000 That's really the consideration we're paying. We're going out and raising money, issuing stock for $610,000. The fair value of the assets that we found up here goes on this line. Assets minus liabilities, A minus B gets us 510,000. So there's that number that was taken from up here. And then finally we have the book value of the net assets. And if you remember earlier videos, book value is simply assets minus liabilities. So I take book value, total assets of 400, plus liabilities of 100, gets us book value of 300,000. And we have the differences between these amounts in the far column that we'll get to in the next video. For starters, the difference between the consideration what we gave up and the fair value of the assets, that difference is goodwill. That's going to be an asset on the balance sheet down the road. And we're going to have another, trans another effect that's going to be the difference between fair value and book value that we'll get to on the next video. That's the end of Advanced Accounting 4 for a longer hour-long course as you'll see essential topics in management accounting and other courses that we do on GoToMeeting where you can watch an hour at a time for a total three-hour course. Here's our YouTube channel, Ken Boyd STL, all one word, for individual tutoring and live chat sessions using GoToMeeting.com. Here's our website, our email, and our phone number. Thanks very much, and we'll see you next time.